42 years ago, Theodore Geisel published, Dr. Seuss published The Lorax. How many people know The Lorax? <laughs> Never out of print, world famous, right? But it's about the land, and I work on oceans. So uh, about 10 years ago, the idea popped into my head, wouldn't it be great if we had a book about the salty cousin of the Lorax? And I, uh, I wrote, what we need is the Mirnet. I am the Mirnet, I speak for the seas. Can you imagine? <laughs> but I can't write a word of poetry. Um, and last year for my birthday, my wife Judy, who's down front, uh, wrote the Mirnet. And, uh, and my son, Sean, illustrated the Mirnet. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. So I'm going to sit down like a father reading the book to his children. Um, and uh, the dedication page was to me, of course, because Judy wrote the book and Sean illustrated it. Uh, but we're also talking about the blue marble, which is something that Jay Nichols introduced to this audience last year, uh, saying, the blue marble that I'm holding up here looks the way we look from a million miles away. This is the blue planet. Uh, why we concentrate so much on calling things Earth when 70% of it is water is still a mystery to most of us. We're small, we're blue, and our smallness means that everything we do matters. So now, uh, the Marinette. At the edge of the earth, where the sea is in puddles, where vacant gray reefs abound, and the surface sludge bubbles, I sought out old salt. He's lived there forever. To find out what he knows, since he's done that and been there, you probably don't know him. Old salt's a rec recluse, they say. He gives no free info. You must offer to pay. And even then, it's iffy to get the whole tale. His business acumen is rarely for sale, but appeal to his ego. Are you rich, as they say? Did you harvest the oceans for critters that pay? Then old salt may advise you all that he knows. He was there when free markets opened and closed. Harvest fish that are tasty, fresh, canned, or fried, and for the tourists, seahorses dried. Why, way back in the day, when the reefs weren't all gray, when blue water was salty and waves were at play, when the moon pulled the tides and green kelp grew tall, Reefs were of coral, pink, orange, and all. As inviting a landscape as any fish had ever seen, with hiding places, seagrass habitats, green, rocky crevices for eels to dwell, and places for shellfish to hold tight for a spell. Corals moved in, neighborhoods prospered, with all that the healthy ocean had to offer. I spied otters swimming, dripping in brown, with fur that looked fine for fashions in town. They were just floating there, easy to grab. Why, just think of all the cash to be had. We'll harvest them in a jiffy, furry beasts all. Their coats will be all the rage in the fall. No one will notice, they're there for the take. It won't hurt a thing, we'll still have the lake. With otter skin coats, fashion history was made. We had the permits, it wasn't a raid. Shame it won't last forever. You know what they say, get in fast, get in good, as long as it pays. Hold a contest, make it yearly. Advertise, pay it dearly. Who can pull in the biggest marlin out of these waters? Make a weekend of it, hang them up dead for starters. When fish disappear, we'll look farther afield, find something else, the public should need. Trips to the beach, quick, make the sand deeper. Let's bring in the tourists, this plan is a keeper. How about some food stuff, seaweed for salad, some oysters for dinner, a treat for the palate? Just think of all the snacks that are swimming down there, and it's all for the taking, nobody will care if we harvest all the free market will bear. If the shellfish get scarce, we'll turn our attention to cowfish, to snapper, to grouper, did I mention? Sardines, tuna, swordfish, flounder, and squid. Seafood is healthy, that's our primary intention. Supply and demand, all for the economy. Think of the profits for you and for me. 
Once the oysters get sca scarce, as they're bound to be, there's always another tasty fish in the sea. That's just what we did. The canneries ran night and day. Money rolled in in the capitalist way. Otters for coats, abalone for tizers, or calamari deep fried, tonight's octopizers. We trimmed off the fins for shark fin soup, dumped them back in the sea so they could regroup. Oh, hell, they'll be fine. The sea is so spacious. Everyone knows Mother Nature is gracious. If worse comes to worse, if we fish the sea out, then we'll dry up the ocean water for salt. We can dam up the rivers, stop up the creeks, halt the fast flowing streams, stop up the leaks, and then let it drain. After that, let it dry until it's grainy under the sky. Gather up the sea salt, it's there for the taking. Just think of all the jobs we're creating. Stop! Stop came a voice. Who could that be? I am the Mirnet. I speak for the seas. Your vision's short-sighted. Your activity's wrong. No body of water should be had for a song. If the otters leave, the sea urchins will thrive. Then, for you know it, the kelps can't stay alive. And what will the fish do with no place to hide, no crevices, rocks to hold fast and abide? with no reefs for eels and sea stars to survive. Life on Earth as we know it will take a steep dive. I have to stop here if you don't see Al Gore. There he is. <laughs> <coughs> the Mirnet's a naysayer, I said with a sneer. He's against the free market. We can engineer our way out of anything nature can throw. No seas, no problem. Everyone knows the superior nature of all living on land. Sustainable, ha. No crisis, no plan. The Mernet objected with tears in his eyes. His pleas were not heeded, neither heard were his cries. Mernet, he was called, disappeared long ago, gave up in despair, for all that I know. Oh, once or twice he returned. Mernet tried to warn us, but with things going so great, what's all the fuss? He tried talking to Congress about overfishing, but it did him no good. They were paid not to listen. Lobbyists were louder than the Mirnet could shout. The oil rigs went in and the sea life came out. He urged boycott. Don't order what they serve up on a bun. A shoe reel TV when they wrestle blue fins for fun. But no one listened. There was cash to be made from the using the oceans. No piper was paid. We had sushi to gobble, shark sloop soup to slurp. Some ocean dwellers were gone before we burped our last burp. We had the sun to bathe in, beaches on which to lay. If we make it worth their while, the tourists will stay. Yearly festivals, seafood fairs say. We'll fetch us some shrimp from farms far away. Local seafood, too expensive. It all went away. The Mernet sighed. He then shook his head. He spoke for the seas, but we wouldn't heed what he said. Where's the Mernet? He left long ago. Did he quit in disgust and despair? I guess we just didn't get it. Although time to time, I think I hear a small voice saying, quick, there's still time. We can still make the right choice. Maybe so, but not now. No bad news allowed. There are elections to hold. Get our party in power, then policies sold. Like the wild-eyed mernets, let the wild-eyed mernets and their ilk throw a fit. If our operations were harmful, our grandkids can solve it. And now, with no seafood, giant squids to squirt ink, no sea turtles or jellies, who do you think was correct about our planet's, blue, blue planet's fate as we rushed to place tasty prawns on our plates? Skies have turned smoggy. We gasp our last breath, look around to see there's nothing much left. Mernet was right, I'm forced to admit. No one listened. That's all she writ. Without healthy oceans, no being can survive. My business plan was flawed, but ah, what a ride. Now I, old salt, have nothing to do but to turn the fate of the seas over to you. I didn't mean to ruin things. I had a good heart. 
But with the mernet gone, mernet gone, where would we start? Can we change our habits on fun, food, and plate? Will we listen to mernet, or is it too late? <laughs>